Hi crafty friends, it's Donna here from Donna is Playing Paper. And as I'm recording this, there's a typhoon raging outside. So I hope that the noise is not too distracting. Things are just a bit wild and woolly, but we're not in any danger. As well as a card today, I have some bonus footage of a festival that we went to. A different type to last time, and I've got lots of food to show you. Today's card looks at using elements that are the same and elements that are opposite to try and have a card that's both harmonious but also has impact. Looks like my hands have got started without us, so let's join them. I'm starting by ink blending a piece of paper with a trio of colours. The purple and yellow are almost opposite colours on the colour wheel, and so I'm not putting them next to each other, because when we blend opposite colours, the resulting colour in the middle is usually either a brown or a grey of some sort. But this pink is lovely in the middle. For those of you that are new to the channel, all the music on this channel is composed by my son Darcy, who's studying composition at university. And this weekend, he's been at a concert which included a piano that came across on the first fleet to Australia. For my US viewers, that's like saying it came over on the Mayflower, except a piano would never have been on the Mayflower because it wasn't invented yet. The piano apparently is dated around 1790, so I thought I'd include a little bit of piano music today. You can see that the first layer of ink blending wasn't particularly careful or smooth because I'm going to go over it again with the butterfly trellis stencil and a lot heavier hand with my ink. My feature image is also going to be a butterfly, so it's great to have something that's the same in the background, these butterflies. But one of the things that I love to do is to use opposites, that is, to combine things like geometric lines with soft flowers, so that the card ends up neither too regimented nor too chaotic. When I've gone over the top with the second layer, I'm blending in roughly the same places, but stretching the colours around a bit to add a bit more interest. I'm stamping my image using a Copic Friendly ink, Memento Tuxedo Black in this case, and I'll stamp that a couple of times to get a nice clean image. I'm going to colour that with Copics in the same colours as the background. And I hope you've got your all direction eyes on, because as I've held the markers up to the camera, I realised that they're in all kinds of directions. I've included a little bit of the colouring for you, but not all of it. For the flowers, I'm putting the darkest shade in the centre of each petal and then shading out. And then I'm doing the same thing on the butterfly wing half of this image, which is to put my darkest colour in the centre and at the bottom of each section of wing, and then to shade through to lighter colours from there. Feel free to sit back and relax and enjoy the resident composer's music while we just colour a little bit and then get on with the card construction. I'm going to cut this butterfly out by hand. I'm going to leave a white border around the outside because those antennae are just too fragile to cut exactly around. The 
The sentiment for today's card says happiest of birthdays to you and it comes from the black and white sentiments set. I'm going around the outside with a black marker to hide the white core of the card. Any marker is okay for this, except probably a Copic marker, which will blend in too much. And then it's just a matter of constructing the card. This pre-cut panel is already just slightly smaller than my card base, and I'm going to stick that down flat and pop the sentiment up with some foam tape. And the butterfly is done using a mix. The wings have foam tape and the center is direct stuck to the page. The foam tape that I'm using at the moment is fairly flat and I probably could have used it double, but at least this way I know it will go through the mail. I'm going to pop up a few more close-up pictures of the card. If you've enjoyed this portion of the video and would like to come back for more, feel free to subscribe. If that's all you want to see, have a great day. But if you're interested in a little bit of our life in Japan, then you're welcome to stay and I've got a bit of footage of the festival that we went to. I'm going to let you listen to the music while the portable shrine goes past and then I'll talk you through what else we did. golden shrine moving around there is kind of the main event. But for me, the main event is the food. And here we see takoyaki being made. Takoyaki are made from batter with a little bit of vegetables and a piece of octopus in the middle of each one. And the takoyaki makers have such amazing skills with chopsticks. Next up is okonomiyaki. And this is basically an egg and cabbage pancake. Every part of Japan does them differently. And on my bucket list is an okonomiyaki tour of Japan because it's always delicious wherever you get it. A lot of people think of Japanese food, I think, as raw fish and seaweed. And the green stuff on the top there is seaweed. But this is a really fun food and a great one to try if you want to try cooking the Japanese food because it's made from very simple ingredients that you can get anywhere in the world. This next game is called Kingyo Sukui and the idea is to scoop your goldfish into the bowl, not to tip them out as we're about to see, using the scoop that you're given. This scoop has a very thin layer of paper on it and so you have to work fast before the scoop dissolves in the water. That sign reads salted grilled fish. And here they are. As an Australian, it seems so strange to me to have naked flames out at a summer festival, but we get most of our rain in summer here, so it's not the fire season at all. Next we have some squid, and in fact that's what I chose for lunch. Check out these bananas. I could barely even look at them, let alone try one. A lot of the footage today is taken by my husband, who has traditionally been referred to in all of my blogs as Mr. Gorgeous. And so, for the first time ever, I think, you can actually see me appearing here and there. Everywhere I asked, the stall holders were so gracious and allowed me to video. These are rice balls called dango, grilled until they're really nice and toasty. But today, squid on a stick for me. I'll see you again soon. We took some more footage then in the afternoon when we went on to a craft fair by the lake and I'll have that for you very soon. Bye for now.